welcome to Hollywood. The Armed Forces Radio and Television Service brings you the Hollywood Radio Theater, starring Dana Andrews and Ruth Roman in The Blue Gardenia. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes in a moment of great emotional stress, we commit a foolish and regrettable act. In tonight's exciting drama, The Blue Gardenia, it's an impulsive telephone call that leads to an accusation of murder. As our stars of this intriguing mystery from Warner Brothers, we have Dana Andrews and Ruth Roman. Now, Act One of Blue Gardenia, starring Dana Andrews as Casey and Ruth Roman as Nora. Almost every large American city has a newspaper called the Evening Chronicle. But not every Evening Chronicle has a reporter and featured columnist whose byline is Casey Mayo. Casey's specialty is the human interest story, which you may find almost anywhere, even in the main office of the West Coast Telephone Company. At the moment, he's in the office of the Director of Public Relations. Oh, yes, Mr. Mayo. Our business has shown a phenomenal expansion since the war. For instance, I have some comparative figures in the file here. Well, that's all right, Mr. Mitchell. I'll take your word for it. Here we are. Now, comparing the year 1953... Oh, Mr. Mitchell. Hmm? Yes? Well, let's save that stuff for the financial page. My readers are interested in people. In your case, that means the telephone girl. Who they are, what they look like, what's behind the voice that says, Number, please. Ah. Well, I can show you some pictures of our girls that we're running in our new advertising campaign. Oh. And these are some pencil sketches made by the artist on the series. This one is Jane. She's our youngest operator. Uh-huh. And uh, Tanira, she was actually born and reared in Turkey. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, the artist who did these drawings, was he Harry Preble? Why, uh, as a matter of fact, yes. Uh, he specializes in women, you know. He certainly does. Uh, come to think of it, uh, Mr. Preble's doing another sketch right now. One of our prettiest girls, too. Would you like to see him? Uh-uh. I'd like to see her. No, Crystal, don't turn your head. I want a complete profile. Look, Mr. Preble, I can't do everything at once. Either I pose for you or I answer Mr. Mayo's questions. One or the other. Then let's concentrate on Mr. Mayo. It would be a pleasure. Now, where did we leave off? I see, you said you were from Chicago. That's right. Oh, and my phone number is Granite 7323. Granite 7323. Thanks, Crystal. Don't bother to call, Mr. Preble. I expect to be out every evening for the next five years. <laughs> what is this between you two? Love at first flight? <laughs> Come on, Casey. Finish up with the girl. I wish there was something you could write about me, Mr. Mayo, but I'm afraid my past is all in the future. Hey, maybe you better try Nora. Nora? What's so special about her? Well, she's engaged to one of the real heroes of the Korean War, that's all. Oh, that's good enough. Lead me to her. Uh, Miss Mayo, uh, Miss Mayo. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. Your office is phoning you. You can take the call in one of the booths in the hall outside. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mr. Preble, there's a call for you, too. Oh, all right. Hello? Darling, I know you told me not to call you there, but I've just got to talk to you. Oh, I... just a second. Who is this? Who do you want to talk to? Uh, don't hang up, Casey. Maybe that's for me. <laughs> Could be, Harris. He wants to speak to Darling. I guess my call must be in the next booth. Harry? Harry, is that you? Hello, honey. Harry, I've just got to see you right away. Look, Rose, I'm tied up now. Call me at home. I can't. You changed the number and I can't get it from the operator. Harry, you promised me that if anything Rose, happens... Rose, I said I can't talk now, so take it easy. I'll call you sometime. Harry! Hmm... Oh, Harry. No, yeah, I got your call, Casey. Yeah, do me a favor, will you, Harry? Tell Crystal and her friend I had to go back to the office. The editor wants to see me on the double. Something big breaking? Something real big for me. I'll see you, Harry, and good luck with Granite 7323. Nora, are you listening to me? Yes, I can hear every word. Yeah, I'll bet. Look, will you please come out of that closet? Just a minute. Go on, Crystal. Then what did Casey Mayo say? He said, lead me to her, he said, meaning Nora. Then comes the phone call, and that's the last I saw of Mr. Mayo. Well, I see why you didn't introduce him to me. After all, I'm your roommate, too. You were busy on the switchboard, remember, Sally? 
so was Nora. All right, so I'm a beast. But Casey Mayo wanted a story, and it's Nora who's engaged to the big war hero. Oh, Nora? Yes? What did Bill say in that last letter about coming home? Oh, I don't know. I haven't opened the letter yet. Nora, where did you get that dress? And how much did they rook you for it? You like it? Oh, yes, I adore taffeta. And thanks for getting it in black. It'll look good on all of us. But you don't mind if I wear it first, just for tonight. Well, uh, seeing as it's your birthday, okay. Thanks a lot. This seems a wasted scenery to get all dressed up like this and then just spend the evening at home. It's the way I want it. Mm-hmm. You know, honey, Homer and I wouldn't mind your coming along on our date tonight. Homer might even forget the movie and take us dancing. Oh, I know. It's sweet of you, Kristen. Does anybody smell smoke? <gasps> oh, I know oh, it. Oh, Nora's roast. It's still in the oven. Sally, you oh. probably burned. Oh. Ruined. Sally, I asked you to turn off the oven. Oh, I'm sorry, Nora. You know I just can't concentrate. I ate dinner downtown, so... Well, so for me, that's the end of food until breakfast. Wait a minute. Maybe we've still got some hamburger in the refrigerator. Hamburger? On Nora's birthday? Not if I can help it. Sally, you're not going to the market. I just got time. It closes in ten minutes. Nora? Yes? Did you buy this bottle of champagne just for tonight? Oh, yes, it's been on ice long enough. I'll take it. Honey, a word of advice from a veteran. Drinking all by yourself is no good. I won't be alone. Oh, of course not. You've got Bill's photograph to keep you company. <laughs> yes, I have. Sure. I've watched you set the stage. The dining table set for two, Bill's photo propped up by his <laughs> napkin, and now champagne for a toast to the big man who isn't here. Well, what's wrong with that? I can pretend he's here, can't I? Oh, honey, it's your birthday. You ought to be with people. Well, I'll be with Bill. And I saved his letter, the one that came yesterday. I'll read it tonight. Well... Maybe I'm the one who's stupid. Maybe pretending is better than the real thing. Well, it isn't, but it's better than nothing at all. Uh Uh-oh, that's Homer downstairs. You sure you won't come along? No, thanks, Krista. All right, all right, I'm coming. Oh, Nora? Yes? Save me the champagne (laughs) cork. I will. Good night. To you, darling. And now to me. Wish me a happy birthday, Bill. No, wait. That's what your letter is for, isn't it? Dear Nora, I've been wanting to write this letter to you for so long, but instead I've written to you about other things. Things that aren't nearly so important as this. Remember when I collected that load of shrapnel in the leg? Well, they shipped me to the hospital here in Tokyo. That's how I met Angela. She's my nurse. We're in love. We're going to be married. <laughs> Hello? Granite 7323? Yes. How are you, honey? Had dinner yet? No. Who is this? Harry Preble. Oh, the artist? Look, honey, let's stop playing games. You told me you'd be out every evening for the next five years, and yet here you are getting ready to have dinner with me. Oh, I- I'm sorry, Mr. Preble, but I'm afraid you've made a mistake. We'll discuss my mistakes over cocktails. Now, come on, hop in a cab and meet me at the Blue Gardenia. They've got the best Chinese food in town. Oh, Mr. Preble, you don't understand. Maybe I do. You've got a date. No, I did have. And he stood you up, huh? Okay, then what's holding you back? Well, I... Nothing, really. All right. The Blue Gardenia. I'll be there in ten minutes. Gardenia? Blue Gardenia? Blue gardenia for the ladies, sir? No, sorry, May. I'm fresh out of blonde. Oh, Mr. Mayo. 
so nice to hear your voice again. Oh, thanks, May. How's everything? Oh, not like the old days, Mr. Mayo. No, I suppose not. I'll tell you what, May. Look me up at the bar after I've had a drink or two. Maybe I'll buy one of those gardenias. I will, Mr. Mayo. Thank you. Well, well, if it isn't Mr. Forth, the state himself. Hey, Harry. I was hoping I'd meet somebody I knew. Yeah, why? You remember this morning at the phone company when the editor called me back to the office? Yeah, you said it was something big. The biggest. I'm to cover the next series of H-bomb tests out in the Pacific. No more hack work for me, boy. Only top assignments. I see. Hey, you said you were hoping to meet somebody here that you knew. That's right. And I asked why. Well, when you have some good news, don't you like to have somebody to tell it to? <laughs> oh, no. It's so funny. <laughs> you, if you want an audience, why don't you get married? Because it's cheaper to talk to you. Oh. Mr. Purple, your young lady, she come now. Oh, thanks, Louie. Young lady, now at table. And, Louie, bring us two of your Polynesian pearl divers and heavy on the rump. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Preble. Yeah, this is a coincidence. I just talked to your friend Crystal. Oh, you didn't talk to her. You talked to me. I, I'm one of Crystal's roommates. No kidding. I told you you made a mistake. The sort I like to make, honey. Mind if I sit down? It's your table. That's right. I uh, probably shouldn't have come. It was just a silly impulse. You see, it's my birthday, and I just bought this new table. Your birthday? Then this is a real occasion. Uh, Louie, those drinks better be for us. Yes, Mr. Preble. Are those rum drinks? Uh, we call them Polynesian pearl divers. Mostly ice and pineapple juice, aren't they, Louie? Whatever you say, Mr. Preble. Can I get high on one of them? Do you want to? I don't know what I want. Only, only to forget the early part of this evening. Okay. Tonight starts as of now. To us. To us. <laughs> What's the name of that tune? Blue Gardenia. Pretty. Was well, the song named for the cafe or the cafe for the song? Which Harry? Harry, you listening? Sure, sure. Uh, Louie, the lady will have another pearl diver. Okay, honey. Why not? Just ice and pineapple juice and soft trade winds across. Have you saved one for me, May? Of course, Mr. Mayo. You've brought me luck. Oh, I have? How? Well, nobody's ever given me five dollars for a gardenia before. And Mr. Preble did tonight. Five dollars? His date must be pretty terrific. i got to see this dish. They just left, Mr. Mayo. Oh. I'm sorry to say it, but I wish that girl wasn't with Mr. Preble. You know something, May? So do I. What do you know? It's starting to rain. <laughs> rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. Still feel okay, honey? <laughs> wonderful. Oh, so wonderful. Mm, smell this gardenia, Harry. What does it remind you of? Mm, South Seas, Southern Cross above <laughs> coral reefs. Lovely maiden bathing at the foot of a waterfall. <laughs> That's me, isn't it? Sure. Okay, hop out, honey. Where are we going? Up to my apartment. I've invited a few people in. Good. Every girl should have a party on her birthday. Mm, no more to drink, Harry, please. Oh, come on. One glass of champagne can't hurt you. Oh, then just one. Harry, where are all the people you invite? They'll be along. <laughs> Such a wonderful place to give a party. You can see the whole city from these windows. And a real fireplace to make it cool. What was that? Just thunder. Harry, can we have some music? 
I feel like that. Well, I'll turn on the phonograph. I've got a special record here to remember our first date. Do you remember it? Mm, blue gardenia. Oh, Harry, I've got to sit down. But you wanted to dance. Oh, I've got to sit down and show her. Oh. Yeah, take off your shoes, honey, and just relax. Everything's uh, all right. Everything's all right. Oh, no, it, it isn't. You wrote me that letter. Letter? Oh, why did you have to meet that nurse? Oh, darling, you know I love you. You do, honey? I love you, Bill. I love you. That's what I wanted to hear. I knew you'd be a good kid. Oh, no, Harry, don't. Come on, baby, give me a kiss. Oh, it's late. I've got to go home. There's no hurry. Oh, there he is. My shoes. What happened to them? Maybe I've got them. Maybe I won't let you have them unless you act nice. Harry, please. Are you going to be nice? Oh, no, stay away if you don't... Yeah, what do you do? I'll, I'll, I'll use this. <laughs> hey, give me that poker. Get away. Give it to me. Harry, I warned you. Act two of the Blue Gardenia in a moment. You know, our servicemen overseas have a wonderful opportunity to observe new customs and traditions. They find, too, that these ideas aren't so strange after all. For instance, take this business of tattooing. On some of the islands of the Pacific, the natives adorn themselves with tattoo marks indicating the group they belong to or the gods they worship. Among the Brahmins and Mohammedans, a tattoo is used as a mark of caste although the caste system is rapidly disappearing. In Japan, skilled artists create truly beautiful designs using the human body instead of a canvas. Well, all this might sound strange, but tattooing is not unknown in our culture. However, as some of our servicemen have observed, it's, uh, well, it's a little embarrassing when a fellow with a tattoo that reads John Loves Mary takes as a wife a girl by the name of Josephine. Or the young man with a beautiful anchor on his chest finds himself in the Army or the Air Force. From another standpoint, the beauty marks worn by some women of Western civilization are nothing more than a form of tattoo. And the same thing is true about other customs and traditions of all countries. The way of doing things may be different, but the ideals are the same. These customs are important to the people who follow them. And our servicemen are helping to maintain goodwill by observing the customs of other people in other lands. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of The Blue Gardenia, starring Dana Andrews as Casey and Ruth Roman as Nora. <laughs> Nora Larkin should never have gone out with Harry Preble. She should never have had all those drinks. And she should never have gone to Harry's apartment. But what was done was done. And when Harry came toward her with that look in his eyes, Nora reached out for the only weapon at hand, a fire poker. Harry, I warned you. No. The night and the rainstorm pass, and now it is morning. In Harry Preble's apartment, a group of sober-faced men are busy with cameras, tape lines, and fingerprint kits. Then she must have raised the poker over his head and let him have it. Who let him have it, Captain? Oh, hello, Casey. What are you doing on a routine murder case? Well, I happened to hear the police called on the car radio. From the address, I thought it might turn out to be something for the society page. No, no, this guy was an artist. Oh, Oh, hey, Al, give uh, a look around and see if you can find some pictures of artist models. You know, something with... Nyah. Gotcha, Case. Ah, so you're right an assistant now, huh, Casey? Don't let Al hear you call him that. He thinks I just write the captions for his photograph. <laughs> oh, where's the body? Now, the coroner just took it. Uh -huh. Who found it? Cleaning woman. And I mean a real cleaning woman. 
She wiped the fingerprints off the cocktail glasses and the fire poker and then discovered the body. Ah, no clues then? Ah, a couple. A lace handkerchief, a pair of suede pumps, size five and a half. Must have been in a real hurry. Unless she's the kind of girl who always walks home in her stocking feet after killing the boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she always wears blue gardenias. Blue gardenias? Ah, uh-huh. we found one on the sofa, broken off at the stem. Hey, Al, leave that pornograph alone. Oh, I just wanted to listen to... Keep your hands off it. Maybe Captain Haynes hasn't checked it yet. Now we have. The cleaning woman said that record was still playing when she let herself in this morning. Oh, I see. Uh, Captain, you said uh, this guy was an artist? Yeah, that's right. A girl, a blue gardenia. By any chance would the victim's name be Preble? Well, I thought you knew, sure. Harry Preble. Huh. I, you knew him? Yeah, I knew him. And I know a story when I see one, Captain. Maybe you and I can write this together. I've got a pretty good idea for Chapter 1. Yes, Louis, remember? Louis take young lady to table. Mr. Preble order many drinks for young lady. All right. And uh, what did she look like? Blue Gardenia very busy last night. Blue Gardenia always busy. That is why Louis not look close at ladies sometimes. But if you saw this girl again... Uh, you'd know her, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you, Louis? Yes. Louis, no. Well, I know you can't see, May, but can you remember anything? Well, they, the girl's perfume. Something about a voice or... It was a friendly voice. Friendly and quiet. Mr. Mayo. Her dress. It was taffeta. Taffeta? Yes. It rustles like no other material. Taffeta. Thank you, May. The police have already been here, thanks to you, Mr. Mayo. They question every single operator who posed for one of Preble's sketches. And did they find, Mr. Mitchell, that one of the girls checked in late this morning? They were on time, all of them. Sorry, Mr. Mayo, but you'll have to look elsewhere for your murderers. Perhaps. Operator, give me the number of the Blue Gardenia restaurant. I'm sorry I cut you off, sir. Please excuse it. Feeling any better, honey? Oh, no, my head's coming to pieces. You're still not talking about last night. Well, there's nothing to talk about. I just went out and got tight. All by yourself, Nora? Who are you kidding? Well, well, visitors again. Who? Where? Down at the end of the board, Casey Mayo and some guy. Hey, isn't he Chinese? Casey Mayo? No, the other one. Crystal, I, I don't feel well. Will you take my calls for a moment? Why, sure, honey. Maybe you better go out and see the nurse. Yes, I have. Well, gee, I've never seen Nora with a hangover before. No, and I bet you never will again. Long distance. Hello, long distance. Yes, sir, this is Operator 27. And better known to her friends as Gannett 7323. Mm-hmm. Oh, ladies, may I introduce my friend, Louis Wong? Yes, sir, we have an appointment call for you. At Glad to know you, Mr. Wong. Maybe you'll introduce your friend, Mr. Mayo. <laughs> didn't I see you yesterday? If you did, you didn't make much of it. Sorry. Well, shall we go, Louis? Oh, Mr. Mayo. Yes? Maybe you can tell us why the police are suddenly so interested in a girl's nightlife. Such silly questions. Such as, madam, when was the last time you went strolling in the rain without your shoes? <laughs> and that was one of the dillies. Hey, what's it all about? I'm sorry, the answer will cost you seven cents. Check page one of the Evening Chronicle. Coming, Louis. We're ready, Salt Lake City. Huh? What do you say, Louis? You looked at at least 50 girls. Which one was it? Louis did not see. Girl not here, Mr. Mayo. Extra, extra artist made it. Paint the guilty penthouse studio. Read all about it. <laughs> City room, Mayo. Casey, this is Haynes. Have you gone nuts? By that, Captain, I'd say you just read my story about Harry Preble. <laughs> you like it, huh? Oh, sure, yeah. Especially this line. Yeah. So here's a bit of information for my good friend, Captain Haynes of Homicide. The murderer you're looking for, Captain, was wearing a taffeta dress, probably black. Uh-huh. She probably was. I checked with the gal who does our fashion page. She says everything's black taffeta this year. Did she tell you that taffeta was a must for murder? <laughs> That's not bad, Captain. You mind if I use that line? Look, Casey, if you got any real clues, I want them. 
Now, you know what the penalty is for withholding information from the police. Who's withholding? Just keep reading my column, Captain. You'll find it all there. Oh, Al. Al. Yeah, Case. I want you to go back to Preble's apartment and photograph everything in sight. I've got to find a new angle, some new gimmick for the next edition. Now, I don't get what's so important about this story, Case. What's well, news? Beautiful girl kills the defender of virtue. That's big news. Mm. And maybe something extra in case you may always pay him a little. Okay, but how do you know that this this blue gardenia girl's beautiful? Maybe she's a dog. Uh-uh, they're always beautiful. What did you call her? The, uh, the blue gardenia? <laughs> That's it, Al. That's my gimmick. The blue gardenia murder case is expected to break wide open within a matter of hours. The clue that may well lead police to the murderess is a taffeta dress, probably black. Lead the police to a murderess is a taffeta dress, probably black. Probably black, probably bright red. That type of girl doesn't wear black. What type of girl? The type who will go out with Harry Preble. Well, maybe she was just lonely, bewildered. Oh. Maybe she was tired of drugstore food and one-room apartments and a career in an elevator or at a switchboard or behind a manicure table. Maybe she wanted more excitement. Hey, gee, that Casey Mayo sure knows how to write. Listen to this. Her voice was quiet and friendly as she drank half a dozen Polynesian pearl divers in the blue gardenia. She was just Harry Preble's kind of doll, a flashy blonde putting on an act. Oh, stop le- it. Stop it, will you? Huh? No, honey. I'm sorry. I'm just so tired. After all day on the switchboard, my nerves are... Same here. We've had enough blue gardenia. Let's turn in. Okay, I'm first in the bathroom. Aren't you always? Nora. Yes? I know what's wrong with your nerves. You do? Yeah. When I woke up this morning and saw you passed out on the couch, your dress soaking wet and everything, I knew something had happened. Oh, honey, I don't blame you for doing it. Doing it? Yes. I found Bill's letter on the dining table. I read it. If a guy jilted me like that, I'd go out and get tanked, too. Thanks, Crystal. Oh, it's nothing, really. All right, Sally. Ready or not, here I come. The clue which may well lead the police to the murderer is the tap of the dress. Probably black. <laughs> Crystal? Sally? Hey, you there. Who, who are you? Night watchman, man. Don't you know it's against the law to burn incinerators after dark? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot. Oh, you forgot that? You, you're not going to make me put it out. No, looks like it's too late now. But don't let it happen again. It won't. No, never again. Gardenia case? Yeah, I need a new angle. Something that'll drag that dame into this office before the cops get her. Why? Why what? Why should she come to you? Because I want her. An exclusive. That's simple, isn't it? Casey, isn't there anything in life for you besides a headline? 
Yeah, two headlines. You realize, Al, one week from now, I'll be out in the South Pacific. I can't just walk out on this dame. You've left dames before, haven't you? Yeah, that's something else. That kind of deal is easy. Not for me. I always hate scenes. I stall the bust up until I'm leaving town, then I write the dame a letter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Why not? Why not what? A letter. Listen. An open letter to an unknown murderer. Dear Blue Gardenia, I hope you'll read this letter because I want to help you. Because I want to help you. When I say I, that means my newspaper and me. Tell us your story. If we get it first, we'll go all out for you. That includes hiring the best trial attorney in town. Hiring the best trial attorney in town. By now, you must be frightened out of your wits. You don't know which way to turn. There's no place to hide, nowhere to run except to me. So take my advice, Booth. Take my advice, Lou Gardenia. Go to the nearest phone booth and invest a dime in the rest of your life. Dial Madison 60025 and ask for it. Yours very earnestly, Casey Mayo. Where are you going, Nora? No place, just out. But my dinner's almost ready. I don't want any dinner. Please leave me alone. I'm, I'm sick of you two watching everything I do and everything I say everywhere I go. Honey, what's gotten into you? Sally and I, we're just concerned about you. You're not yourself these days. Oh, I'm not. So you've both been spying. You admit it. No, I just silly. Well, leave me alone and don't try to follow me. Well, what was all that about? I don't know. Sally, I'm beginning to be afraid, terribly afraid. Mayo. I read your ad in the paper, Casey. If you'll just tell me what size police badge you wear, I'll come over and pin it on your chest. <laughs> How are you, Captain? Fine. Just burning to meet your pen, pal. Hold on a second, will you, Captain? Mayo. You know how I killed him? You want to know why? Because I loved him with a passion that was bigger than both of us. The size of the passion is very important, lady, but tell me first, what size shoe do you wear? Shoe? Eight and a half C. But I could wear an eight if it was... Sorry, lady, you are not our Cinderella. <laughs> Captain Haynes? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. That last call makes the tenth confession so far. How many phonies are there in this town? Hello. Mayo. Mr. Mayo, I read your letter. Okay, lady. Tell me how I can be sure you are the blue gardenia. The newspaper said the police found his shoes. Weren't they suede shoes? Maybe. Go on. They were size five and a half B. The rubber heel was loose on the left shoe. Am I right? Look, where are you calling from? A phone booth on the street. It's it's right next to the service station at hey, the corner. Hey, fellow, where's the washroom? Yeah, yeah, go on. No, no, I'm not ready yet. Hello, Gardenia. Are you still there? Hey, fella, your phone's off the hook. Hello? Gardenia? Gardenia? Who? Gardenia? Who is this? Highway Patrol, Officer McManus. Where's the girl I was just talking to? What girl? I don't see any girl around here. Yeah, of course, she saw you first. Okay, officer. Thanks for the near miss. Uh, hey, Case. Yeah? You think she'll call again? How do I know? Well, it's been a couple hours. <sighs> All right, Al, I get the message. Go on home. You mean it? I, I hate to leave you here alone. It's almost midnight. Go on, I said. You're lousing up my game of solitaire. Okay, okay. See you in the morning. Hello, Mayo. Mr. Mayo, do you remember a phone call earlier tonight? The one that was interrupted? Uh, just 
Which call was that? Uh, about the shoes, size five and a half feet. I know the girl who phoned you. I, I'd like to talk to you about it. Uh-huh. Where are you now? A, a block from your office. Okay. Come on up here. There's a self-service elevator on the side street. Get off on the second floor. That's the city room. You'll be alone? Yeah, alone. All right. In five minutes, Mr. Mayo. <laughs> In a moment, Act Three of The Blue Gardenia. The story is told about a couple of tourists who are going through an art gallery in Italy. One man, obviously tired of sightseeing, announced to everyone within hearing, Ah, you call this art? Nothing but faded paint and cracked canvas. We got better stuff on our calendars at home. An American serviceman overheard this and saw how it offended the Italians. He turned to the man and said, Sir, the paintings here are not on trial. The people who come to see them are. Well, the frowns of disapproval on the faces of the Italians were erased by smiles of understanding, and the incident was widely repeated. It was a small thing, but even small things can have tremendous results. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. Curtain rises on Act Three of The Blue Gardenia, starring Dana Andrews as Casey and Ruth Roman as Nora. In the dark and deserted city room of the Evening Chronicle, Casey Mayo waits tensely for the minutes to pass. And then in the corridor outside, the automatic elevator. Casey reaches for the light switch. Oh. Hello. Won't you uh, sit down? Please. Right here. Cigarette? Yes. Thanks. Local girl? What? Oh, you're a local girl. You're born and raised here? Does it make any difference? No, not really. Just making conversation. Well? Uh, Mr. Mayo, I, I want to explain about the first phone call, why my friend didn't call you back. She was too frightened? Or maybe she didn't trust me? That was it. So she asked me to... to talk to you. Look, I don't want to sell myself to you or to your friend. I told you, I mean her, all we want is an exclusive story. We'll pay for it with the best criminal attorney in town. But perhaps the police will never find you. Oh, they will. And they won't be so generous either. How did your friend meet Preble? At the phone company? No. She didn't tell me. Well, anyway, they were good friends. No. She went to his apartment, didn't she? He said there'd be other people there. Mm-hmm. Mr. Mayo, she had a lot to drink. She, she wasn't thinking. She wasn't thinking, period. That's what she told me. She doesn't even remember killing. Oh, the old amnesia alibi. Now, maybe you're worrying too much about your friend. <laughs> Sounds to me like she can take care of herself. I don't know what to say. Hmm. Look, how about a hamburger? What? I've been cooped up in this office here all night. No dinner. There's an all-night joint up the street. Oh, no, and... no, I don't want to be seen like that. <laughs> Believe me, it's perfectly safe. It's one of those hangouts that's either empty or you can't get in. Hmm. Just the thought of one of those juicy hamburgers and a cup of coffee. Coffee? Yeah, a whole pot if you want. Come on, let's go. You know, when you first walked into my office, I thought you were the blue gardenia. What changed your mind? You're coming here with me. You wouldn't have risked that. Besides, you're just not her type. Oh? What type am I? The type that looks very becoming with a dab of mustard on the tip of your nose. 
I have not. <laughs> but I have. <laughs> Do that again. What? That. It's the first time since you walked into my office. It's the first time since I found out about... about my friend. And you haven't found out very much. It's clear up till the time she went to Preble's apartment. The rum drinks, the flour he bought her. Even after that, when he put the record... The Blue Gardenia? Yeah, pretty strong. Let's see, I think it's listed here on the jukebox. Yeah. Hmm, that's a nice song. It's too bad it was background for murder. Mr. Mayo, you're not going to print any of what I've told you. Not until I've talked to the Blue Gardenia herself. And it better be soon. The police have her shoes. They're checking the stores to find who bought them. Oh, Mike, what do we owe you? Uh, two hamburgers and five coffees. Uh, dollar forty, Mr. Mayo. Okay, it's here on the table. Thank you. Mr. Mayo, I, I'm going to talk to my friend. If if I can get her to call you. No, no more phone stuff. You tell her to meet me here at three forty tomorrow afternoon. Why three forty? Because that gives me just time to make the sunset edition. Hi, honey. Oh, Crystal, I, I hope you didn't wait up just for me. No, I just got home. Homer took me to the Blue Gardenia tonight. What a mob. Everybody wanted to sit where the murderers sat. And everybody thinks that he did. Want some milk? No, I'm turning in. Good night. Nora. Yes? After Homer phoned for the date, I decided to borrow your new black tacit address. I couldn't find it. I I sent it to the cleaners. Then I noticed your pumps were gone. The black suede pumps. Really? Honey, I've been putting everything together. That big mystery about the night of your birthday. Where you went, who you were with. And your jitters ever since. Nora, baby... Was it you? <laughs> oh, Nora, baby. Afternoon, Mr. Mayo. Oh, Mike, has a girl come in who... Hello, Mr. Mayo. Oh. Well, Granite 7323. You know, I, sus- I suspected you from the start. You did. Yeah, I did. That's funny. You look smart enough to have gotten rid of Preble some other way. Oh, I could have. But it just happens that I didn't do it. You see, I'm allergic to gardenias any color. Now, what are you doing here? Because the real girl is ready to give herself up to you. But before she does, I want to be sure you meant what you told her last night. Oh. Where is she? Who's behind us? Treat her right, Mr. Mayo. Well... Now you know. Yeah. Now I know. <sighs> Mike, some coffee over here, strong as you got. That's the way it started. When Harry Preble called, I made the date, Crystal's date. And Nora Larkin, a country kid in the big city, winds up killing a man she'd never been out with before. But last night you said your friend, well, I mean you, that you, you didn't remember doing it. I must have. There's no other explanation. More coffee, Mr. Mayo? No, thanks, Mike. Okay, just holler if you do. Mr. Mayo, I know I should have told you the whole story last night, but I wanted time to think. I, I had to be sure I could trust you. And you're sure now? I'm sure. So what do we do? I... I don't know. You don't know? Nora, I I didn't expect you to be the girl. Oh, what's that got to do with it? You promised him that letter you'd help me. Didn't you mean what you said? No. Don't you see, Nora? I thought the killer was just another cheap dame. If I'd had any idea that it was you... No more lies, please. I've had enough. Oh, Nora. That's okay, Casey. My boys will escort her. It was a trap. You led me into a turret. Take her along, boys. Haynes, wait a minute. You made a mistake. No, it's the other way around, isn't it? You have a cozy twosome with a wanted killer and forget to let homicide know about it? Or am I wrong? 
Did you tell Mike to tip us off? Mike? No, sir, it ain't. That was all my idea. You see, first I read Mr. Mayo's letter to Blue Gardini in the paper. Then last night I see him come in here with some dame. It's 3 a.m. And then here they are again now. So I begin to figure, see? I add up. Then I go to the phone. <laughs> Pretty good detective work, huh, Mr. Mayo? Maybe you'll do a story about me, huh? Yeah, an obituary, I hope. <laughs> Some headline, eh, Case? Yeah. Paper, mister? No. Beautiful killer caught by columnist. Go on, beat it. Oh, what's wrong with you, buddy? Yeah, that's a good point. She can't mean that much to you. She might have. Let's go in this drugstore a minute. I need an aspirin. Long time since you've needed aspirin because of some dame. Will you shut up about her? Okay. How? Listen. Hmm? That's music. Well, what about it? You heard canned music before? They piped the stuff into half the stores in town. Oh, yeah. When we first checked over Preble's apartment, you turned on his phonograph. You played this record. Huh? Yeah, that's right. The cleaning woman said that was the record on the phonograph when she found the body. Well? Well, don't you see? It isn't the same record that was playing when Nora blacked out. Come on, Al. Let's forget about the aspirin. <laughs> Now, do you see what I mean, Captain? No, I don't. You drag me up here to Preble's apartment, you play his phonograph and say, this is the wrong record, but where's the proof? Nora's the proof. She said she heard only one piece of music played here, and that was the Blue Gardenia. Casey, she's confessed. I've got the evidence to convict her. I'm happy. Captain, a woman's life is involved. We can't let her go to the chair because of a wrong piece of music. All right. Where do we go from here? Where? Take a look at the label on this record. What? See where it was bought? Melrose Music Shop. May I help you, gentlemen? Uh, we hope so. Uh, did you ever hear of Harry Preble? Well, who hasn't? A good customer of ours. <laughs> or was. You know anything about this album of records he bought here? Police? Mm-hmm. The Haynes Homicide. Oh. Well, Miss Miller handled Mr. Preble's account. Just a second. Uh, uh, Rose, can you come up front, please? I'm unpacking that new shipment, Mr. Smith. Well, let it go. There are some policemen here to see you. Who? The police. It's about Preble. All right. I'm afraid, Casey, this is just a wild goose chase. We're not going to learn anything here. Okay, so we keep trying. Oh. oh, wait a minute. What was that? It came from out back. Come on. Yeah. Rose? Rose? Hold on, where's the washroom? Uh, that door right there. Uh, uh, Rose? Uh, Mr. Smith, you better call an ambulance. A police ambulance. Uh, yes, sir. I want to die. I want to die. No, you don't, Miss Miller. You want to get those cuts bandaged, and then when you feel better... No. We... I want to be with Harry. Harry Preble? <laughs> yes. You were in love with him? Yes. I knew I didn't have a chance with all his other women. When he walked out, I crawled after him. And then that night I went to his apartment. I still had the key. I walked in and found him with that... with that woman. You mean Nora Larkin? Yes. She was passed out on the floor and Harry was holding the fire poker. He said they'd been fighting. I told Harry he had to take me back. He said he would, but all the time he was pushing me toward the door. I knew he wanted to be alone with her. I grabbed the poker away from him, and then with all my might... Miss Miller. Miss Miller, I'm Casey Mayo of the Chronicle. I wrote a letter to you on the front page of the paper. Maybe you read it. Yes. I promised to help you to be your friend. That promise still goes. Well, 
On your call to Providence, Rhode Island, sir, to P.O. Baker, there will be a short delay. Hello, operator. Yes, yes sir. I'd like to place a person-to-person call, please. Oh, you? Very cute, Mr. Mayo. Gee, we thought you were still out in the Pacific watching all those H-bomb tests. My plane got in this morning. Now, uh, how about my person-to-person call? Oh. Would you repeat the name of your party, sir? Miss Nora Larkin. Thank you, sir. I'll try to... Operator. Yes, ma'am. Will you please tell your party that Miss Larkin is not ready to talk here? Then would you please leave a message, operator? Yes, sir. Say that Mr. Casey Mayo deeply regrets certain mistakes he made in the past. He'd like another chance. Another chance? Boy, if you only knew... Sally. Well, I heard you the other night. Operator. (laughs) Yeah? Please tell your party that Miss Larkin is not free to talk now. But she suggests an appointment. Call later. Tonight? Seven o'clock. Dinner? Of course. Mr. Mayo? Yes. Maybe a human interest story? Uh Uh-huh. Very human and very interesting. Read all about it in the Evening Chronicle. In a moment, our stars will return. Make a friend, and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Louis Cass knew how important friendship is. In 1836, he resigned as Secretary of War to accept the post of Ambassador to France. It wasn't too long after his arrival there that he became friends with King Louis-Philippe. But making friends with the French people was another story. Anti-American propaganda had been too well planted over the years. But one day, Cass witnessed a street fight. With the appearance of armed troops, the fighters fled, leaving a group of bystanders about to be fired on. Stepping out in front of them, Cass told the commanding officer that he, as well as the Frenchmen with him, were innocent spectators and that to fire on them would be murder. The officer apologized and ordered his men to put up their guns. The incident marked the beginning of Louis Cass's friendship with the French people. Gradually, despite the attempted smears by other nations, Cass strengthened the understanding between his country and France, and he was eventually responsible for the signing of a treaty by America, France, and England, a treaty which guaranteed freedom of the seas to all nations. Once more, an American had proved to the world that by helping others... You help your country. Now, here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. And they're coming forward for a bow. Dana Andrews and Ruth Roman. (laughs) Now I know you must have a hit for next week, Irving. Isn't it another of your 20 great... Yes, one of our greatest war pictures. The story of a foot soldier of World War II. Battleground. Winner of the Photoplay Gold Medal Award for Metro Goldwyn Mayer and a stirring tribute to our fighting men. And as our stars, we'll have that fine actor and first citizen of Hollywood, George Murphy, and one of our most talented and popular artists, Van Johnson. An excellent choice, Irving. Good night. Night. Good night, and do hurry back. Theater is produced by Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is directed by Rudy Schrager. This is your announcer, Ken Carpenter, inviting you to be with us again next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Thank you.